I studied game development in Sweden for two years. Those were the times, man. The best thing about this education is that we had game projects. The programmers, artists and designers got together for six to nine weeks. We had no studies except, well, the study to make a video game. Working on a medium-sized team, we had the issue of keeping our stuff in sync and we used source control to do that. It was fine for most programmers. We ran into issues sometimes, but we usually solved them pretty effortlessly. The artists, however, well, they had a lot of problems with source control. So my classmate programmer decided, you know what? I'm gonna help out the artists. When they screw up, we need to help them. If we make their lives a little bit easier, then it will also make our lives a little bit easier. And kind of as a joke, he made this whole thing. He made an application that was just one button. When you press this button, it would sync down all of the changes that everyone else has worked on. It committed the files locally and then updated it. It pushed the files up. I don't actually remember if anyone actually used this application, but it was just kind of a fun thing we joked around about. Today, we will rebuild this application. The one button fix it all application. Open up the terminal, go into my folder, cargo in it. Let's call it Git for lazy programmers. I'm gonna use visual code. I don't think we'll need any external libraries, so let's jump into the main file. When it comes to source control, I started out learning the graphical UIs. That's fine on its own, but you can also do version control with the command line. And that's how we're gonna make this application work. We're gonna do command line calls to git. So what do we need to do? We need to pull changes, commit local changes, and push. I'm not sure how we do command line calls, so we're gonna find the documentation for that. There we go. Oops. <laughs> Ah, wrong button. Let's just copy all of that. Bam. I did all of that without the mouse. <laughs> We're gonna include process command. Okay, let's run our application, see what happens. Cargo run. No such field nor directory. What even is this command? Let's just change this up. What if I just do echo? Hello. It crashes. Do I really need to do this? What do we echo? We echo hello. Okay. It ran, but nothing happened. Ah, wait, I'm silly. When we call output, I assume it takes this result. So let's print it out instead. What is the result of us doing echo hello? Result. Yay, it worked. We're gonna call git and we're gonna do a pull. I don't actually care if the output fails, so I'm gonna remove this exception. Let's put that to one line so we can make this a little bit easier. We're gonna git pull and then we're gonna git commit and the message is going to be uh, updated my stuff. Fix this string. We have a git pull, git commit and then we're gonna git push. Let's build this application and then use it somewhere else. I'm gonna need a repository to try all of this out. So let's make one right now. Git test. Add the readme. Let's go. Let's copy all of that. It's clone. Let's copy the application we built into our new repository. This is how our repository looks like at the moment. So let's make a change and use our application. And let's open Vim because I love Vim. And let's write something in here. Hello. And we're gonna quit. And now we need to update it. We will need to push it to the internet. So let's use our application. Git for lazy programmers. Oh no, it wants us to authenticate. I'm gonna do it manually for now, okay. Tan tan dev. Oh, it needs to do that every time. <laughs> Did it work? No, it didn't work. Let's actually do something with the output to see what happened. Uh, results. Save the results. And then print it out. Uh, result. Okay, let's push our changes with our application. It actually worked. 
I forgot to do one step and that is add all of the local changes before we commit them. So let's do that. Uh, we need to add everything. Let's authenticate. Git add is not the command. Why? Okay, let's try to do this instead. I call our application. What happened this time? I think it might have worked. This command doesn't work as we can see here. So let's do this instead then. Two files changed. Okay, let's go to our repository. It worked. And not only did it update the readme file, it also added this application. Let's fix the authentication part so we don't need to do that manually. Git config credential helper store. Okay, let's try to git pull and see if if it will save it to my computer and my path. Okay, we solved it! And let's run the application and uh, now I don't need to put in any authentication and I didn't need to do any changes to my code. Let's run it. Bam! It just pushed it. Our life is so much easier right now. We didn't do any changes, so of course no commits happened. Let's do some changes to the readme. We're gonna write two. And then we're gonna push and pull and all of that. And let's update it. BAM! It's updated on the GitHub repository. And it says 222. I think it would be funny if the commit messages were different every time. Something random. We're gonna make a list. Let's just do it like this. What should our commit messages be? I don't know. Oh my god! Another update! Uh, I don't know what is in this commit, lol. Oops! Broke everything! Uh, fix the stuff. Uh, this is very realistic, so no one will suspect a thing. Okay, okay, we have our messages. Now we need to include it in our commit message. We need to randomize the message. Rust doesn't have a standard random library, so we need to include one. And I'm gonna include the one called rand. You can, of course, find this on, on the internet. And as you can see, most downloaded, there it is, the rand library. Uh, let's just copy that version so we get the exact version. There we go. Jump into main. Now we're going to randomize what message we will use. Let message. Uh, we're going to index into this array. So let's make an index. We're gonna use rand, uh, get a random number generator, and then generate a range. It's going to go from zero to the length of this array. Messages length. There we go. Now we have an index. We can use that index. And instead of saying updated all my stuff, we're going to send in this message. Uh, let's do this. The next argument is our message. Okay, let's try our application. Try it out. We should do changes to the readme file so it actually pushes something up. So let's make a change to our readme file. And let's do write bugs or something. And then we call our application, see if it works. Bam! Let's go to our repository. Beautiful! Why no work? Bugs, isn't that beautiful? Let's do it again. Let's write something, run our application, BAM! This is all of the code, and this wouldn't work if we got a merge conflict. Imagine I worked with another programmer, we changed the same file. How do we fix that with our lazy programmer application? Well, of course, we're gonna discard everything the other programmer did and take our local stuff that we did. A few hours later, I've implemented resolving merge conflicts. Imagine if we change this readme file at the same time someone else does. If we do a pull request, we'll get an error saying that the files have a merge conflict. The files would then get these beautiful lines of text indicating what changes I did and the changes the other person did. My code needs to clean this up. We need to do some string manipulation and then writing to files. This is my new Rust code. The first change I made was to make a helper function that simply does a git command and then prints out the result. We add the locally changed files, put them into a commit with this randomly generated message. We do a pull request and using the output from this pull request, this function get conflicted files will return the files that have a merge conflict. This is done by scrolling through the string, the code looks for this particular string and using some fancy string matches, we can extract all of the file names. 
now we know what files we need to fix. We load the file, pass it into this function, and out comes the file string, but with this merge conflict text removed. We are going to see how this works soon. We then save the file that we resolved the merge conflict on, and then if we had any conflicting files, we need to make a merge. So we add the changes we just made to the files and merge it with a lovely message. Finally, we do a push request and we have successfully destroyed the other person's contributions and possibly broken everything. Lovely. You might wonder how my code cleans up the merge conflicts. Well, this is what happens. I made a struct called string shipper. It will go through this file and when it finds this particular string, it will remove that whole line. This function will remove everything from the start input to the end input. I'm not gonna explain this code, but I'm gonna give you an idea how it works. The remove line simply finds the index where our input starts. We then find the index of the end of the line, and then we remove all of the characters that is on that line. There is a lot more to it than that. This ship away function will run these commands in a loop until it reaches the end of the file or string. The reason we remove this arrow head and then remove everything inside the equal sign and the, these arrows is because the head is our local changes and the other part is the remote version of the code. After removing all of that, we will end up with my local changes. That is how this program works. Of course, this project is kind of a joke, but I think it's pretty cool. I think Rust is a really good language to write applications like this. Thank you guys for following 20,000 subscribers. Oh my god, that's crazy. This is Tantan. See you guys later. Bye-bye.